racing now. I wish I win from last. A spectacular TJ win. Giga kick, giga kick down the outside. Wins the Everest. Shinzo and Brian Moore have drawn clear to win the Golden Slipper. With Tim Gilbert and Julie Snook, this is Racing Dreams. Oh, hello and welcome to Racing Dreams, day one of the championship. What rain? What rain? <laughs> we have had the greatest deluge of all time the last few days in Sydney. Hundreds of millimetres of rain. We'll confirm that completely with Michael Wood, Jules shortly, the track manager here at Ramwick. But we're on. We are on. Good morning, Timmy. Good morning to you at home. Day one of the championships. I tell you what, 24 hours ago, we weren't sure what this scenario was going to be, how this track was going to look. We certainly didn't expect this sunshine because right along the east coast of Australia, Timmy, it has been absolutely torrential. This vision that you're looking at now is our crew coming into Royal Randwick early this morning, a stark contrast to what we're looking at now, Tim. Oh, absolutely. And I was driving into Sky News around that five o'clock mark this morning uh, from my home in the northwest and the roads uh, dodging trees that were down. It has been an extraordinary few hours. Um, Mother Nature rearing her teeth. And uh, now, uh, beautiful blue sky. We're not expecting another drop of rain throughout the course of the day. And uh, look, we'll be racing on a heavy track. But uh, we'll be racing, and uh, it's an extraordinary day of racing when you think of it. Doncaster, Derby, um, we've got uh, Storm Boy. We do. We have Storm Boy. Four Group 1s today, and, of course, the Country Championships final as well. We've got a huge show coming up for you today, but let's check in with what has probably been the busiest 24 hours for Michael Wood from the ATC and his team. Uh, good morning to you, Michael. Talk us through this last 24-hour period. Good morning, guys. Uh, where do I start? Um, pretty, pretty wet afternoon yesterday, and then obviously all that rainfall overnight. Uh, we collected 173.3 millimetres since 9am yesterday. Uh, took us to 232, basically in in 48 hours. So um, yeah, we've had a, our fair share of rain. It was it was pretty pretty hairy this morning. Um, you know, we had a storm right on on five o'clock, uh, which dropped 30 mils in about 20 minutes. Um, and that led to a little bit of uh, a bit of water across the track over at the thousand metre point. Um, that subsided really quickly, and, and that's probably what what held things up, I guess, um, just for the progression of the meeting. But that moved away really quickly, and you know we're we're going around in a heavy ten, but um, yeah, very happy. Yeah, well, as we hear the uh, the dulcet uh, tones behind us, a little bit of music, and uh, that won't stop us. Of course, everyone's getting prepared. There were some thoughts that uh, we weren't going to get prepared for anything, but it's almost followed the script that you told me throughout the course of the week. You said, look, it doesn't matter so much on how much rain we get as long as it doesn't rain on the day. Yeah, well, I wasn't expecting 173 mils either, Timmy, but... Um, Look, it's, no, uh, no, 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 it's certainly it's, it's certainly a blessing now that we're we're standing here in sunshine, um, and that was always sort of the forecast was that it was going to be to a clearing, uh, that storm cell was going to clear, and then would be a, a nice sunny day, and it's going to get to about 27 degrees, yeah, and yeah. it's quite warm even standing here now. So I'd expect a fair bit of moisture to come out of the track throughout the day. But um, look, they'll get into the track, but it, it, for us, it's just a, a big achievement to be racing on a day like today. Yeah, congratulations to you and the team, Michael, because it is absolutely extraordinary. What we've seen here in Sydney uh, the last 48 hours has just been something else. So to be able to race today, to have sunshine today, you can't blame mm. the team for oh. warming up here this morning. Oh, it's because... unbelievable. Well, it's unbelievable. Can, can you give us a little bit of a wrap for your team, Michael? Because congratulations from all of us. Uh, this is a bit of a racing dream that we're even racing today, and the music crescendo is even behind us to back it up. Tell us a little bit about the work your team's done. Oh, look, the team, I can't wrap them enough. I, you know, they, they do all the work. Um, they're, the, they're the guys that get all the products and things on the ground. They're the guys that do the hard work and the renovations. You know, I've got a leadership team, Matthew Cork, Jake Carlaw, um, head of gardens, Dave, um, you know, guys on the training tracks. Everyone puts in and this place raises a lot, you know, and the expectations are always high. So um, for those guys to carry out the works they do and, and get everything done, you know, to get a day like today, uh, off the ground is it's full credit to them really um, I just stand here and, and lucky enough to talk to you guys yeah well congratulations to you and the whole team I know you've got a busy busy morning you've had little sleep but uh, I appreciate you giving us a few minutes for racing dreams buddy 
thanks guys have a good day enjoy it Well, of course, a very big day ahead. A lot of news around this week as well. So let's go straight to the newsroom where we find Daily Telegraph journalist Shane O'Cass. Good morning to you, Shane. Who would have thought we'd see this sunshine? I'm absolutely staggered that they're on, Julie. Morning, Timmy. And uh, that there's sunshine there as well. Look, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a, a minor track upgrade by the by the end of the afternoon because we've got 10 races through until about uh, 6 o'clock. And uh, if Michael's saying it's 27 degrees, a bit of humidity, we might get to a heavy 8 uh, by the end of the day. But I, I just can't believe we're racing. It's fantastic. Well, it's quite appropriate. The ho first horse we asked you about is Storm Boy, because Thornboy missed the start in the Golden Slipper, still managed to run third. It was an extraordinary run, and uh, here he is today uh, trying to win the size. Yeah, look, he, I don't think he lost any admirers, Timmy, losing in the Golden Slipper. He might have lost a little bit of value, but I think he can put some of that value back on himself today because if Stormboy can retire to stud, you know, in a couple of years' time with a Group 1 win as a two-year-old, particularly in a race as important as the size produce, uh, then it's game back on because he's, he's obviously so well-bred, uh, but his breeding is going to come into play today because there's not much in his pedigree, Timmy, that says he'll be a swimmer. Uh, he's by an American horse uh, out of a Fastnet rock mare, but uh, look, all horses are different. If he gets through it better than the rest he'll be winning um, but it's a it's a tough ask but he's still the the best two-year-old uh, at the moment in the country so we'll see how he goes uh, and we've also heard this morning Lady of Camelot, Shane, has been scratched. Yeah, it's taken a little bit away from the size, I think, because we were looking at the first five across the line in the slipper lining up in the size again, which um, it's a pretty big effort. But, look, we've lost the winner, but I still think there's a few other horses there that are going to challenge Storm Boy. You know, Manal was uh, on the lips of everybody after her great run in the Golden Slipper. You've got Coleman, the Victorian horse, who was runner-up in that race, and he's got a great uh, wet track pedigree by the looks of things. So I don't think Storm Boy's going to have it all of his own way, but, you know, you know, if he can win today then uh, and maybe go on to the champagne then you know it's, it's going to be pretty exciting to, to see what he can do next year as well absolutely he's coming from a, a reasonable gate to uh, it's slightly wide but it should suit him today now what about I wish I win Imperatrice this is a, a fantastic uh, matchup in the TJ yeah, absolutely. Look, it's it's Doncaster Derby Day, Timmy, but I think it's TJ Day because this is really going to be the race of the day. It's probably the race of the year uh, up until what we might see a return clash in the Everest later on. But just from today's point of view, we're talking about the defending champion there, I Wish I Win, who's first up, uh, and Imperatrix, the, the absolute standout sprinter in the country at the moment and probable horse of the year. They've raced twice before. She's beaten him twice before. But uh, look, the way I Wish I Win races in Sydney, I think levels them up a lot because he's only raced here three times, Timmy. He won a Golden Eagle. Uh, he won this race last year, and he was second in the Everest, and unlucky too. So, uh, look, this could be a race that we're talking about for a very, very long time afterwards. Yes, unfortunately, we've got uh, the Waikato Stud team joining us shortly this morning to talk about I wish I win and provide... Um, not I wish I win. Yes, I wish I win, sorry, to provide a bit of an update. But I wanted to ask you about the Doncaster now, Shane. Uh, what a field we've got lining up here today. We've got Oban Biramai, we've got another wheel. Celestial legend, Les Bridge, is saying this could be his best horse ever. Saw him yep. during the week. He's, 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 he's excited about it. Oh, yeah, and uh, and Les is not one of those people to, uh, to to do his own talking. Let's the horse do the talking, doesn't he, Timmy? Um, and, look, he's a great horse and he's got a light weight and that's going to help on a, on a really heavy track like this. I think it's a vintage Doncaster. We certainly don't see any bad ones, but this is an absolute ripper. Um, the horse I'll be watching is uh, Think About It, the one right there at the top of the weights. Look, he's the Everest winner. He was uh, being set for the Doncaster straight after the Everest. Um, I think it'll be one of Joe, uh, Joe uh, Pride's greatest training performances if he can win a Doncaster uh, with an Everest winner because... A lot of people don't think he'll run the mile, but uh, Joe Pride's a great conditioner. He's got the top weight. He's on a really heavy track. If he wins this, it'll be uh, the training performance of the year by far. All right, the, uh, the culmination of the New Haven Park Country Championships, the final today. Yeah, look, Bandy's boy's been the horse that everybody's been talking about for quite a while, probably since he won that, uh, since he won the heat. And then, of course, last week he won a Star Kingdom Stakes. So the thing about Bandy's boy, Tim, he's got a rating of 110 now, which rates him about, you know, higher than six or seven horses in the TJ. The, the next highest rated horse in today's country uh, championship is on 89. So he's got lengths on them on form. Uh, he's just had a little issue during the week, which apparently is all over now. If the best Bandy's boy turns up and if he handles the wet, he probably should just win. 
win. But look, we saw a $61 winner of this race last year. So, you know, it's not cut and dried. There's a lot of horses out there that, uh, that might step up on the day and say, you know, this is my day to win a million dollars. Well, there is so much to talk about here today. We do have to leave it there. Shane, lovely to catch up with you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Good on you, Shane. It's, it's hard to believe. Tenth year of the championship? It is the tenth year of the championships. The grand final of Australian racing. And we have seen some incredible moments here at this track. Of course, so many of us, we're standing in the wink stand today, and so many of us remember those moments with her. So today we take a look at what could be ahead for day one of the championships of 2024. To me, Doncaster Derby Day is a special day. Everything that goes with it, huge crowds, the buzz, the world's best jockeys and trainers competing here in Sydney, elite racehorses, fantastic racing. That's what it's all about, producing racehorses, and that's what we all get a great thrill out of. To get the opportunity to come to Sydney and to race your country trained horse on the big stage is huge for people. 10 years of the championships, the grand finals of Australian racing, and now the dawn of a new decade. From a stakes race at Rose Hill Gardens seven days ago to firm favourite in the country championships final. It's been a bit of a curse for us this race, so we just have to try and hold everything together. Can Bandy's boy break the hoodoo for Goulburn's Danny Williams in the million dollar concept of bringing country racing to the heart of Sydney? The Group 1 action starts with the English Sires and the battle of a $50 million colt out for redemption over his stablemate, Lady of Camelot. Stormboy's got the run on the inside. Coleman wide out with Lady of Camelot. It's Coleman, Lady of Camelot. Coleman ahead in front to Lady of Camelot. Coleman, Lady of Camelot. The Lady dives and Lady of Camelot got up. The TJ Smith is synonymous with speed and stunning stories. Last year, it was Waikato's I Wish I Win who stole the show. Nature Strip, the world champion, Spritter trying to fend them off. Marzu's the first to challenge. Nature Strip, Marzu, Giga Kick lengthening. And I Wish I Win down the outside. I Wish I Win went past Giga Kick, Marzu. I Wish I Win from last. A spectacular TJ win. He's back again in a star-studded field, featuring the long-awaited showdown with fellow Kiwi Imperatriz. Imperatriz, 100 to go. Johnny Rocker bravely giving her a race, but it's the Kiwi wonder. 10, group one. 2024 marks the 159th running of the Doncaster Mile, a capacity field attracting nine group one winners and an Everest champ. Hall of Fame trainer Les Bridge says Celestial Legend might be his best ever horse. Then there's a Japanese Raider and Golden Eagle winner Oban Buramai. Oban Buramai is charging home. It's Golden Mile. Pericles. Oban Buramai. The Japanese stallion bomb them. Oban Buramai. My goodness. The Group 1 Australian Derby encapsulates racing tradition. Riff Rocket this year bursting through as a fan favourite. While the time-honoured race for three-year-olds could mark a fifth straight win for Michael Friedman's Weimark. Four Group 1 races and a country championships final. Day one has arrived. Well, this very day last year, it was a fantastic win by I Wish I Win in the TJ Smith. A stellar field came down the outside, stormed to victory. It was an extraordinary win. It was an extraordinary win and we are very fortunate to be joined this morning by uh, not only the owners but the breeders as well of I Wish I Win all the way from Waikato Stud. Good morning to Mark and Charlotte Chittick. How are you guys? Very good, thank you. Good morning. Mark, this horse has taken you on such a ride. Yeah, he certainly has. I mean, obviously, right from way, um, day one, it's been well uh, documented uh, how he looked when he was born. But, um, you know, to end up back here at uh, Ramwick on a, on, on a day like this, it's, the sun's out, it's shining, it's beautiful. And to, um, you know, try and defend the crown from last year, it's uh, just a huge thrill. It's great to be here. 
Charlotte, you've been here this week for the sales uh, and the yearling parades. Could you have expected that we would be here looking at this track in this sunshine given the week we've just endured? Definitely not. <laughs> we were swimming at the English Easter sales over the last week, so we're lucky that the sun is out. Happy to be here. Well, he's got no problem with this type of weather. Yours? No, no, that's right. I mean, he, he prefers being on top of the track, but, you know, last year, if we go back to last year, we had 20 mils in the morning of um, the TJ Smith last year, and, and it was it was a bit of a question mark over how he was going to go, and, and he seemed to love it. So, um, you know, probably even a bit heavier this year, but uh, he's fresh up, he'll be looked after, but hopefully we're, we're right there at the, at the finish. You've been in touch with trainer Peter Moody this morning. Pete's been out and about early this morning. We've seen him with kicking the shoes off in knee-deep water in the middle of the <laughs> track. Break in the, the, early. In the rain <laughs> at one point. <laughs> but what's Pete said about uh, Wishy? He looks pretty good and pretty relaxed in the stables this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Look, um, yeah, the yeah, trainer and horse are pretty relaxed. Um, um, I, I think uh, you know. Uh, I wish I win. He's got a bit of. He's probably got a better shine on his um, coat than than Moods has. But then again, he doesn't smoke as heavily as Moods, so that's probably <laughs> why. But um, um, no, like he, he's very fit. He's very he, he's very well. Obviously, he hasn't had that race day fitness. Um, so whether that whether that tells today or, or not, um, who knows? But you know, Moods is a master, and he'll have him spot on. What do you think of this horse, Charlotte? I've obviously. Uh I don't want to use the word ugly duckling, but, but he, he didn't start, as you said, at the start of the interview as uh, this pristine-looking potential racehorse, did he? Definitely not. He was very unassuming as a young one, but we gave him a bit of time, and he's pretty ready to go now. Well, speaking of today, J-Mac gets the call up. Your dear friend James McDonald. Uh, Luke Nolan cannot ride today, but James, look, I think he goes all right, this James McDonald. He should be an all right jockey to steer the way. Yeah, we decided to try and um, keep it local. Uh, keep it letters local. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but no, um, like you know, obviously we're wrapped to have James on him. Um, James and I have been uh, had, had a long, long association, um, known each other for a long time, and obviously I, we all um, incredibly admire what he has achieved and what he is achieving. So to have him. Um, on uh, I Wish I Win Today, you know, we just text each other and I said it's, it's, it's just pretty cool to be having a crack at this together. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Charlotte, you've been at the sales, of course, there's so much anticipation about the sale of Winx's yearling, the yes. filly, but uh, you guys brought some yearlings over. Tell us a little bit more about uh, what, you've, what you've got. So we've got two Savabille fillies, which are beautiful, beautiful animals, and then we've got one colt by Super Seth out of Hopscotch, so a half to the Oaks winner in New Zealand, Amarillina. So we're pretty happy with what we're presenting this week. Beautiful. And what's been the, the atmosphere out there as well? Because there's another filly up for sale uh, on Monday that's garnering a little bit of attention. So <laughs> yes. I imagine that the hype out there has been quite something. Yes, definitely. People are coming from far and wide to see the Winx fillies, so it's very exciting for the industry. All the best today. Is there any chance you can give us the bladders like this year? Is there any chance? <laughs> <laughs> give something. You've got, right you got the right coach. You've got the right coach. You've got the Kiwi coach. So, um, but no, look, uh, thank you for having us on today. And, and, and it's a day that was massive last year for us with the with the TJ and the Derby and and um, you know to have an interest in the TJ uh, Wymark that we bred in the in the Doncaster and then a bit of a share in the sorry in the Derby and a bit of a share in a Doncaster runner in Lock Eagle it's um couldn't be any better yeah well, it's great to have you on the program and it's continued we want to get back over to Waikato start Julie said she had a wonderful time so I'm looking forward to coming over there and having a glass of something are we, nice that's just we around the corner before, from yeah. you guys are we, we I won't go into what I drank when I was there but are we going to see you in the spring the Everest are you going to come back or what yeah hopefully I mean this is this this is the start of the campaign yeah. this is the start of the road again into the into the Everest obviously you know we've got to um, we've got to tie a few things into um, you know slots and things like that like like everybody does but uh, this is the start of it and um, you know, um, Moods has been, you know, hell bent on this is the start of it, and he's he's got his track sorted right through to uh, to October, and hopefully be back here, and hopefully go six inches better. Well, you and your teams, you work very very hard. Anyone that knows anything about this industry understands the hours that are kept. And uh, look, congratulations on what you've achieved. All the very best today. Thank, Thank you very much. much. This is what it's all about. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, stay with us. Coming up after the break, we'll have more live from. Royal Randwick, a very sunny we're Royal race, Randwick. We're racing dreams come true. <laughs> Oh, it's wonderful to have your company this Saturday morning, racing dreams, and uh, look, looking behind us, you wouldn't have thought that 
had been a drop of rain. Sydney, for those that are living outside uh, Sydney, the weather has been atrocious. There's no other word for it. We heard from Michael Wood in the last few days nearly 250 mils and it's now looking pretty as a picture, Jill. Yeah, incredible effort mm. by the Australian Turf Club team here today because I tell you what, the vision we were looking at of this morning alone, let alone what it has been like along the East Coast for the last two days, has just been extraordinary. So a heavy 10 today, the sun is out, there is some warmth. I I'm feeling it on my back. <laughs> so it is a good sign for a huge day of racing ahead, four Group 1s and, of course, a country championships final as well. But a very, very important competition on our show is our tipping Absolutely. comp. It's, it's important, but it's very we important. don't take it very seriously. It's important, but not that serious. <laughs> we don't. All right. Good morning, Mark Brassel. Good morning, Isabella Lynn Bruggen. Uh, welcome to Royal Randwick on a beautiful sunny Saturday. Oh, I wasn't expecting this, were we, Mark? But absolutely loving it. I need a hat. <laughs> really? Well, this is unbelievable. Sorry. You've got an extra smile on your face because you finally got off the mark. Oh, well We saw done. all your emails during the week. Is there a chance someone could cut and paste a green tick for me? Well, remember I said I'd leave a note for the Easter Bunny. So he came good. Well got done. The green tick. Well done. Uh, let's take you... I'll get you to take us through your tip for this week. Yep, Who are you going horse. with? You go... I'm sticking solid. Another Will, who uh, did the job last week. This is a horse I think we haven't hit the bottom of. I think he's got more gears than what we've seen. Uh, I've gone back through his form. He's won on a heavy track by five lengths down south. Uh, as I said, he's untapped. And what's going to happen here, he's drawn 17. In the Doncaster, of course. He's, race yeah, eight, sorry, in the Doncaster, yeah. yeah. He's going to get across. He's going to be out of trouble. And I'm thinking that's probably where you want to be. You want to be a little bit out and wide and away from all the trouble that might happen on the inside. So I'm pretty confident this horse can go on. 50 kilos, Jamie Carr, I, I think he wins. Right, I'm going to stick clear of the group ones at Randwick today. A little bit too difficult to judge for me, but I'm going to go for Autumn Angel, race four, number one. Kenny Stakes last start looked in unbelievable form, was in the pack late, looked like could have been swamped here but she found a burst and was able to break through ended up winning by a nose carrying top weight so it'll be a big ask on a heavy track but I'm hoping she can be my autumn angel keep my uh, tipping comp going, charging along, not on top but I'm, I'm doing alright. You're all very angelic anyway Bella, you don't have to worry about <laughs> don't that worry, I'm sliding, I'm sliding down the pole <laughs> very very quickly, which way are you going this week? This week, today, I am going with race two, number eight, uh, Verona in the chairman's quality. Kira Ma and Jamie Carr are teaming up with this mare. Coming in at $3.80 from five uh, yesterday. Does have a little bit of wet track form. Uh, group three winner, third up today, carrying 53 kilograms. So uh, behind Circle of Fire, I think, is favourite for this one, uh, which Shano has gone with. We'll have a look at that later uh, in this segment. But carrying 53 kilos with Jamie Carr. So that's why I'm with today, Verona. I don't remember the last time I was 53 kilos. Yeah, well, I'd have to lose. I'd have to lose a couple of legs for that. But uh, look, I've gone with Espionage. I spoke to James Harron during the course of the week. Espionage was unlucky not to get a run in the Golden Slipper. Uh, a very, very talented two-year-old. I know that Adrian Bott has a huge opinion of Espionage. He's fairly short in the kindergarten. So that is race one, number one, Espionage. So. Um, I'm expecting it to be a James Harram win in the first race here at Royal Randwick on day one of the championships. All right, well, let's take a look at our other tipsters, who they have selected today and across this weekend uh, for our tipping comp. Ray Thomas has gone with race 10 at Royal Randwick, I believe. He's gone with commemorative. Uh, Kirsten has gone with a clever cookie, and she is a bit of a clever cookie at Dubbo as well. Um, and who else have we got? Shane, as I said, has gone circle of fire in the chairman's quality race two here at Royal Randwick today. And all importantly, this is how it's looking after a number of weeks. We haven't got oh. far to go. I've still only got the one uh, off the duck egg and Mark is off the duck egg now and so is Ray. It's... There's a competition on our hands there, but have a look at Nick, our tipster on our show. I mean, he's not perfect, but, geez, he's doing well. Nick Burney from Racing New South Wales, absolutely outstanding, and he's going to be joining us uh, a little later on in the show. Now, you've got in your hands a really important medal. Mark, tell us all about what you've got there, what, what it 
remembers and, and who it's for. Now this this is uh, this is what the jockeys, apart from obviously a little bit of money, but they are really keen to win this in honour of Nathan Berry. Uh, as we all know, it's uh, ten years the other day. Uh, it's a three-two-one over two days of the championships. Uh, last year it was a dead heat. Uh, Joe Marrera and James McDonald. Uh, J Max a hot favourite to win this year. Uh, but uh, yeah, over the course of the, the two days of the championships, I don't know whether you can see the initials, but uh, the initials are the same font as Nathan had on his racing pants, and the blue and dark blue is uh, unencumbered uh, racing silks when he won the Magic Millions, Nathan's biggest win. So the jockeys are really keen to win this. Nathan rode 351 winners during his career. Career, as you said, Mark, his biggest win aboard Unencumbered uh, in the Magic Millions in January of 2024. It's been uh, a really poignant week. We've heard from Tommy Berry. He's been speaking throughout the week, paying tribute to his late brother. And and what a remarkable chapter, I suppose, this has been for the Berry family uh, and for the racing community as well. Yep, absolutely. And as I pointed out, uh, that jockey's room, they're so keen to win this. And uh, you know, I, I just can't wait for it. It's, uh, as I said, it's a 3 2 1, and uh, uh, I think Joe and J Mac finished on 10 points last year. It's a count back uh, how many winners they ride. So they both actually rode two winners, so it was a tie. So, uh, and fittingly, the first time it went round, this is the 11th mm-hmm. year, Tommy Berry dead heated. So, God bless him. Yeah, absolutely. And Huey Bowman, of course, won four of those medals. It's, uh, it's much sought after in the memory of, of a wonderful man lost way too young. Uh, Nathan Berry, of course, the twin brother of Tommy Berry. Mark and Isabella, enjoy day one of the championships as we change pace and uh, hope you have a winning day. And Isabella, congratulations for getting married to the wonderful Hugo next, next Saturday. Week. Unfortunately, it clashes with day two of the championships, oh, though. Well. So, <laughs> unfortunately, I'll be missing that. But yes, an important day wedding. Yeah, so good luck. You. We'll get your bets on early. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stay with us. Coming up after this, we'll have more live from Royal Randwick for day one of the championships. Can you believe it? The sun is shining. The track is looking sensational. We've got more coming up after the break. Great to have your company on Racing Dreams and, of course, the New Haven Park Country Championships on today, the final, Jules. The final and what a field it is going to be. But before the final, what a lot of people forget is there's a night out and all the contenders always find out the hard way that the, there is a night out before day one. It's at the Doncaster Hotel, which is just here, <laughs> and the Kellys put on quite a show. And Danny Williams, the trainer of Bandy's Boy, the favourite, was there, and we are joined by Danny and... Two of the very happy owners of Bandy's Boy, of course, Margot and Jack Coffey. How are we, guys? Yeah, good, thank you. Well, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Awesome. I'll tell the truth. You're all feeling a bit second-hand, <laughs> yeah. aren't you? Yeah, I'm yeah. feeling a bit seedy. I think, uh, <laughs> I think we all are. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Great night. How is this horse of yours, Bandy's Boy? Um, obviously, we saw on social media this week. A couple of little hiccups, bit of a vet check yesterday. What's the latest with him? Look, everything's fine. Yes, he was pretty sore on Tuesday when Racing New South Wales stewards and, and vets came down to check him, but it was actually a good a blessing that it actually happened because we'd done, done very little with the horse and, and I didn't actually see him lame, so when they trotted him up, we, we identified the issue and, and, and acted on it very quickly and we've, done, uh, we've put a lot of procedures in place in the last uh, four days since then and and uh, he's fine this morning and, and, and great yesterday as well when he got better. Jack, this is a great family story. Your, your grandfather bred the horse? Yeah, he did actually. Um, he bred it and, you know, he's lived in the country his whole life and to have it uh, in the country championship final, he, he would have been very proud of the horse and everything that's done. He had a break off the back of that heat win in Maria Danny. He comes out and he wins a Group 3 at Rose Hill last week. I think it was Greg Radley who said in the coverage, um, not a bad warm-up in the lead-up to a country championships final. Yeah. After the uh, qualifier, um, all my runners went out to the paddock for just short of a week. And, uh, look, he, he came back and most probably it was a blessing. He, he'd improved, taken that next level. And we'd pencilled in Rose Hill... Um, to run the week before. We weren't certain 
that uh, the result was going to be the same, but uh, we, we just penciled in a similar um, program to what we did going into the uh, qualifier where he ran seven days out. I rang the handicapper and, and asked for a bit of assistance of you know what he felt and uh, whether we were sort of heading in the right direction if there were any other races and we sort of both came to the conclusion that the Star Kingdom the week before was about the only race he was best suited in and uh, my biggest concern was not getting a run in the race and the handicapper said look in the last five years we haven't had a full field. Lo and behold, there was a full field of 16, a very star-studded lot, so mm. seeing win, it was just uh, an amazing effort by the horse, and he's just gone from that one level to the next. Margot, your dad was a committee member at Forbes, Ben Hall Country, for, yes. for 30 years. Uh, yes. What does this whole story mean to you and the family? Oh, it's very special, and, yeah, we're grateful that we've got Bandy's boy. It feels like we're still have that little connection with Dad now that he's not with us anymore. It's like he's left us this little legacy and, yeah, it's very special. And the horse was very special to Dad. He spoke about him all the time, was really excited and at what, you know, the future held for him. Um, yeah, obviously last week we made the trip down for Rose Hill and even though he wasn't expected to do anything when he won, that was was a very exciting and special moment, yeah, and we were obviously thinking, well, if Dad had been here, he would have, like, he thought it had potential, but, yeah, I'm not sure whether he would have been aware that was it could do that, I'm not sure, yeah, but that's, yeah, it's very special, and yeah, we're just excited to be here, and the whole country championships, and having grown up in the country, and Dad spent his whole life in the country, yeah, it's quite meaningful. Yeah, he served over 30 years as a committee member at the Forbes Jockey Club, as such a prominent part of that community. Um, Danny, I've got to ask you, how does it feel here today, day one of the championships, you've got the favourite for the country championships final. What would a, a win with a family like this, a horse like this, mean to you? Well, firstly, um, you know, being from the country and... and um, Having an opportunity to race in, in, in races like this is just absolutely fantastic. And, uh, you know, you don't get very many chances. They, it's, a, it's a little bit like the Golden Slipper. They only run a certain number of horses. You've got to get into it. There's a lot of work, that, you know, leading into this to get to this point. And, and you know, it's, it's something that we have to program long, long before. So to actually get here and even have two runners... Uh, it's just mind blowing, and, and uh, obviously for a lot of trainers, it, it is life changing because we're racing the big stage for a million dollars, and it would be really special to to get a winner for John and John's family. I mean, you know, John's taken what 30 years to get a decent horse, and unfortunately he can't see it, and uh, you know he's been looking down on us. And as as uh, Margot said, um, you know they 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 were sort of um, praying to the, the skies that uh, John would bring them luck and Margot's got a bit of a story about um, both sisters at, uh, at, at Maria. Um, if you'd like to ask her about that, um, it's a bit of a special and touching moment actually. Yeah, well we might finish with that because um, time's always the killer in TV. Tell us the story, Margot. Oh, well, my older sister lives in the, she resides in the UK and she made obviously the trip back for Dad's service and his service was on the Friday before the Maruya qualifier on the Sunday and so we made the trek across from Forbes Cowra and, um, but she, Dad's always had a love and interest in racehorses but my older sister sort of was a career woman and never really followed. Yeah, she didn't share the same passion or interest. But anyway, she came across, but it was quite emotional a day for her. She'd flown in and it had been a busy week and it all sort of hit her as Bandy Boy was going into the barriers and, yeah, she sobbed the whole the whole race around. My son and husband were going, Jackie, the race is on. Like, and then when he was winning, he's winning, he's winning. But anyway, and then anyway, and last week she put a... Um, she went back to the UK and opened up her betting account, which she's never had one bet in her whole life, and put, said, oh, I've seen Bandy's boys racing at Rose Hill, and I think it opened at 51 or so, or maybe it was a bit different in the UK. She said, so I've put, like, 50 quid each way on it, and my husband was like, 
Oh God, he said, that's a real, like, that's a big race. It's, she didn't have any idea. Anyway, he ended up winning and she won about 5,000 pounds. Oh, tush out, tush out. So well, she God. was mo- but it was oh, just funny. Yeah. I was like, Dad would have been having a chuckle. Oh, she yeah. never had a bad, bed in her life. Well, so. look, thank you so much for coming in this morning. It's a beautiful family story. It's a great initiative by Peter Volandis and the team at Racing New South Wales. And uh, all the very best today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great Don't day. Go rogue in Sydney tonight if you win it, right? <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> and, of course, um, the New Haven Park Country Championships is sponsored by John Kelly and the team at New Haven Park. And uh, they've got a busy, busy week at the English Sales this week, as they had up at the Magic Millions a few weeks ago. And uh, there'll be a new stallion on the scene over the next couple of years, a horse that won two Group 1s himself, Mwanga. And I caught up with John Kelly. He's working into the clear and bazooka down the outside. Easy can easy the fence. Mawunga hitting top gear and Mawunga will score. Draws away to beat Global Quest. Mawunga, very elegant. She'll really have to lift as Mawunga put the head in front. Very elegant's trying to fight back. There's a swarm coming late. Cascade in right down the outside, but Mawunga's won it. Mawunga, I think, has beaten very elegant. Mawunga got to the front. Mawunga from Skylab. Mawunga, Skylab sits Mawunga just in front. It's Mawunga's guineas. Mawunga just beat Skylab and the Philly Modophilia third. No hard luck tales today for Mawunga. Down the outside and bang, he wins the guineas. John Kelly, nearly 120 years old, New Haven Park. Uh, this guy here, big part of the future, particularly the immediate future, Mwanga. Oh, definitely. Tim, he's, uh, he's an exciting stallion prospect. Twice Group 1 winner, by Savabeel, eight times champion stallion, great family, New Zealand bred, total outcross for all our Daniel mares. You know, you don't get any better. He's got to be one of the best Savabeels, doesn't he? He's got to be one of the best. I know there's so many. Oh, he, he's arguably his best cult. Mm. You know, like, uh, he's got a lot of, obviously, cool as a bill as a champion, two-year-old, embellish. He's had a lot of good cults, but I think this bloke came to Australia, raced, won two group ones in Australia. I think he's, you know, his best son. Absolutely. And you isolated at four, I want to buy this horse. Can you tell us a little bit about that process? You, you, you know, we know Savabil and he won a couple of group ones, so there was enough to flick your interest. Oh, to be truthful with you, my uh, my brother Charles, when he won his maiden, he said, gee, that would be a great stallion for us. And that was when he was a two-year-old. Then obviously he went off and he was that good with There's no way we'll be able to afford to buy this horse. And uh, one of our uh, major shareholders rang me up one day and said, look, what about Mwanga? So that gave us the courage and out we went and we got us into it together and we bought him. Annabelle, fantastic. Like in your words off camera before, they both put each other on the map. Yeah, they did. Uh, Annabelle's first Group 1 winner uh, when she first got training. Fantastic effort. She was, did a wonderful job with him, his career. And uh, after she got him off Chris Waller, she did a great job. Her achievements since she uh, came to Australia six or seven years ago are astonishing. Yeah. I think she's got a big stable and that sort of thing, amazing. Wink Stakes amazing, beating horses like Very Elegant and Colding and Think It Over. Think It Over. And, yeah. and, and Rose Hill Guineas is a real stallion making race. Yeah, look, winning Group 1s, that's what stallions need to do and that's what he did. So he won one in the Winks over 1400 metres and the Rose Hill Guineas as a three year old. He's just a very good horse and uh, we are really excited about him starting his stud career at New Haven this year. How does it make you feel, you know, just months away from seeing him go to start? Obviously the plan has worked to this point. How does it make you feel? Oh, look, when you're a stud master you want stallions. So to have one of his credentials coming to stand at New Haven and, uh, you know, he'll get a lot of support from us and our, his syndicate, it's, it's just exciting. That's it, just excited. Yeah, he's pretty relaxed too, isn't he? He's got a great nature. Just having a pick. Yeah. It's not a bad life either, it's just a... <laughs> well, wouldn't you like it? Absolutely.
to Racing Dreams. Great to have your company. Uh, we're just moving a couple of things here into live, live television show here at Royal Ramwick for day one of the championships, Julie. And the sun is shining exactly what we wanted who for could, this. Who could have thought? Who could have thought? After uh, all the rain. Exactly. Nick Burney from Racing New South Wales joins us now. Nick, given everything we saw this week weather-wise, who would have thought we'd be all complaining that it's too warm and too sunny? I know. I was squinting. <laughs> I want to take my jacket off. It's, it's too hot. Um, look, we're going to be on a heavy 10 track. We all know that. So, But it's going to be a great day of racing. I think they'll probably go down the middle of the track, but I think there's plenty of winners to be found. A good value in this meeting. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Shane, Shane O'Cass even thought we might even get a track upgrade. Well, that would be nice. Well, that would be, be nice. Be we need to bring the chopper back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> we've, we've seen the chopper in past years. Get to the chopper. Uh, now, what about race two, the chairman's quality? Yeah, circle of fire. So it's a Kieran Ma trained import. Um, I just think he's ready to peak this, uh, today. He gets out to a more suitable trip. You go back through all his international um, form, and it, that's just where he produces his peak figure. So he's third up. I think this is a target race as well, and he drops seven and a half kilos off the run that we're watching on the replays. The horse in the blue, he comes down the outside, and he actually runs the fastest last 200 metres, one of the fastest last 200 metre splits of the whole entire meeting. So a horse just with such a likeable profile, and we all know these Europeans, when they're bred over there, they can handle these conditions. And he's getting up to a really good price, around that $3.50, $3.60 mark. I think he's clearly one of the best bets of the day. So there he is, down the outside. You can't really see him just yet, but watch him surge late in the blue and the green uh, colours. So really good effort there. All right, one of your other best bets of the day comes up in race four, the Adrian Knox Stakes. Yeah, good banter. So this is a John O'Shea uh, filly as well, who... I really think just had no luck or preparation. So they put the blinkers on last time at Kembla Grange and it was just caught really wide the whole entire trip. And on the turn, it gets pushed even wider there. So I just think now out to the 2,000 metres on a heavy track where one, it's made it on a heavy track, this is its time to really step up, probably push on to an Oaks. Um, I just think he's a really good bet today. And in, coming out of that race at Kembla Grange was Tudor Levita, who subsequently ran second in the Group 1 um, Finery Stud Stakes last week. So... I think it's a really good bet around the $6.50 mark as well. And uh, look, uh, you won't be able to see it from <laughs> where you are at I home. I asked for it. But yeah, yeah, Nick, Nick requested his chopper. For the chopper. And what happens? Arnie's up there in the <laughs> chopper, ready to go and help dry the track. Now, I, I caught up with Les Bridge during the week. He's a fantastic uh, friend of our show, uh, big South Sydney Rabbitoh supporter. Yeah. Uh, won the Melbourne Cup with Ken's Eye, won the Everest with Classic Legend. Hadn't been to the track for a couple of years. This is a pretty special horse, Celestial Legend, uh, by Dundeal yeah. in the Doncaster. Well, how could I not have one of the best bets in, in my opinion, if not the best race on the year? I love the Doncaster. Big handicap. This horse is coming off a Group 1 win, and it gets him with 49 kilos. So it's extremely well-weighted. And in that rear with guineas, it just had no right to win. It was attacked from all angles. They really rode to beat that horse, and he just kept responding under pressure. Look, it's had a trial in between runs. I know it's 28 days between runs, but it was a nice trial. I think it's right up to the mark. And as you said, Tim, Lesbridge said this horse could be one of the best horses he's ever trained, if not the best. Out of 60 years, that's a pretty big feat in itself. So rain affected ground, no issue. I've, look, around that $8, I think he's a great bet. I, I want to take on the favourite around that 360 mark. So let's back Celestial Legend. I will never forget the year that uh, Les told all of us in the media that he was going to win that Everest, and then he reminded us all when he won that Everest yes. that we needed to listen to him. Yep. <laughs> and I remember when he watched it out the back there with no one else, and it was, that was quite a good scene, actually. And one of your value bets of the day, too, uh, race 10. Yeah, she's been well back, but I think we can finish the day on a good winner here in... Um, Chris Dilley. So we're going to look at the Percy Sykes win. So this was this time last year. Of course, it's autumn on a heavy eight track. So we know she handles this ground. And just she's going a lot better than what the form guide reads. Her last two starts, she's had no luck whatsoever. Her first up run was a real hidden run behind Lady Laguna, who subsequently has gone on to win a, a Group 1. So, look, I think around the $6 mark, this is a great way to the get-out stakes. Hopefully we've won a few before this. But she can come down the centre of the track. And I really like the booking of Blake Shin. All right, let's have a look at Nick's tips for the day. We'll pull up the graphic if we can. We'll uh, just let that race wrap up. There we go. Oh, we've moved on to our multis. Oh, I'm going to go circle of fire to win. Good banter to the place. 
and the Dolphins. Yes, I've been awful on the NRL tipping. But, um, I'm surprised you're still come going. On, yeah, maybe don't back the Dolphins. <laughs> well, I, think, you know, well, I have too. I think you've gone strong there with the Dolphins. Of course, uh, our multis, and, and a lot of people love the exotic betting. It's, it's good fun to actually get into a little bit of racing and, and a little bit of the footy. We'll have a look at the next page. And that is mine. Espionage. I, I do think Espionage will get the job done in race one. Really good horse. James Harron, I've gone Dolphins, Cowboys, two duels. And today I have gone with Verona, if we have a look at my graphic there. Um, I've also gone Celestial Legend for the win and the Raiders, and the Raiders as well. Before we let you go, Nick, I've yep. got to ask, on a day like today, for yep. punters that are coming in the gate soon when yep. they open... What are they looking for? What's some advice to the guys out there today? Well, on a heavy 10, I think you just, when you go to the form guy, just go straight to the heavy track stats. That is key. You want to be on a horse that's going to be fit. You don't want to be on horses that are first up, except by Wish I Win. Oh, it might be the one you. who can change um, the old adage. And lightweights, they're always a big plus. They just get through the ground a lot quicker. So I think they're three little pointers you can work towards, towards if you're looking for a winner yeah, today. Good advice. And just quickly, yep. uh, how do you think the track will... Uh, Michael Wood and the team have done a fantastic job. Yeah, just quickly, yeah. how do you think it'll race today? I can't believe we're racing. Our standing job by them, firstly. I think they'll probably get off the fence, come down the centre of the track, but you've really got to watch out um, how the pattern does play out throughout the day. Good on you, Nick. All right, Nick, lovely to see you. Well, a big day ahead here at Royal Randwick. Four Group 1s, a country championships final. Day one of the championships. It's all happening. Yeah, and a big thank you to Racing New South Wales, of course... Our sponsors and Arrowfield Stud and New Haven Park, thank you all for supporting our program. We love it. We love making racing dreams come true. Have a great day. Day one of the championships. Come on out if you're thinking about it. Oh, beautiful. See you soon.